We pray, Heavenly Father, we are so happy that you are here in the form of the Holy Spirit, not in a body of flesh, but in that spirit to head up the church and to lead the church into the promised land, which we know is to be the great millennium. We are grateful for that. And we pray, Lord, that as this word has come and you had a prophet to deliver it, you had him already prepared, so even now you're preparing the people. And we trust that we are aware of that as we proceed down the last little days of this life. And that we might be not only aware, but very amenable to your word, knowing that prayer is not that which is given to us to twist your arm or to make you change your mind or to cause you to do those things which we want you to do. But rather, Lord, prayer is we agreeing with you in your revelation, your word, and we want to help you, ask you to help us to bring ourselves in submission and subjection to that word, that that word may come forth in our life, and not only this life, but the life which is to come. So, Father, help us to that end tonight. Teach us your word more perfectly. We'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right, now, last <clears throat> Sunday, as in previous studies, we saw how Eve failed to bring forth the promised word seed son through bypassing her husband, as did the first church age, and has continued to do so. Yet there must come a church that is the true virgin word bride of Christ and to Christ, not only of but to because that's where the trouble came. They failed him. They were of him and failed him. Even as the Virgin Mary said, Be it unto me according to thy word. And the royal seed was born and fulfilled his destiny. And even now is on the Father's throne waiting for the reincarnation to come back with the other sons and seed of God to fulfill Genesis 1, 26 and 30. And you're all aware of that. Let God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea or the fowl of the air or the cattle or all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. The image of God created him and male and female created he them and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, <clears throat> let's just look at that again. So we saw in our previous studies how Eve failed to bring forth the promised seed or word seed son. And it came to pass she did this by bypassing her husband. She turned to somebody else. Uh, who was able to and wrongfully inseminated her, bringing forth not the Son of God, but a bastard. That happened also in the first church age. We find that Paul was worried about the bride being inseminated by a wrong word. Uh, it all started with the mind, <clears throat> which is the womb of the spirit, the womb of the word, and uh, consequently, we have a very sorrowful condition at the end time, which is a thoroughly illegitimate church. In, Je in Revelation, the third chapter, 14 to 23. So that church, the first church, bypassed her husband. But we have, of course, Mary, who was on the scene, the Virgin Mary, and she said, Be it unto me according to thy word. Now you'll notice in there that Mary makes literally two statements, uh, one of which is, first of all, be it unto me. Now, I want you to just think a minute. What does that little phrase, be it unto me, actually 
is the same as another phrase which can be summed up in one word. You thinking? Okay. Be it unto me. So let it be. What's the one word that sounds just like it? Amen. Amen. All right. Mary said amen. And Brother Branham said that every true seed of God full of the Holy Ghost says what to every word? Amen. amen. All right. <clears throat> she said amen. According to thy word. Now, <laughs> just about every fundamentalist says amen, amen, amen. But when it's according to the word, hey, I never said amen to that. <clears throat> now, just to be really nasty, let's read the word of God. Revelation 3, 14, And unto the messenger of the church of the Laodiceans write, Thus saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. This is the same God of Isaiah, the God of the Amen, <clears throat> the God of truth. So, Eve could not say, and did not say amen. Let it be according to your word. She took another word. The first church age took another word, which has been increasing until when the God of the amen comes on the scene, let it be according to thy word. They're a million miles away, and they're, and they're saying in the face of the legitimate scripture, and all scripture is legitimate, but this is even more legitimate than anything as it was in the days of Noah. But the fundamentalists, led particularly by the Pentecostals, that a brother Branham said back in his day, which is, my goodness me, <clears throat> 28 years ago, and he said it 30 years ago, Methodists want the Baptists, Baptists want the Presbyterian, Pentecostals want them all. And the Pentecostal is still today the fastest growing church until in Latin America the, the people are coming away from the Catholicism and Protestantism and from idolatry and nothingness and they're becoming Pentecostal by the tens of thousands. And everybody's screaming, millions now living will never die. That is a lie from the pity hill. Now I know that you and I are acute <clears throat> of being crepe hangers and uh, not very nice people because we dare to say just a minute, millions now living, in fact, billions are going to die. So therefore, we are looking for a Mary, <clears throat> a true virgin of the word who will say, Amen to the angel of this hour. Hey, let's read it again. Revelation chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 14. To the messenger. To the messenger, right? <clears throat> of the Laodicean church, the last church of seven church age. You bunch of lukewarm people. That the best of your testimony is this, one of self-aggrandizement, self-satisfaction. I'm full and I don't need anything. Remember, when you come to the Lord full, he turns you away empty. And the empty ones, he turns away full. He doesn't turn them away, he brings them in and feeds them. <clears throat> Because you see I'm rich, increased in goods, and have need of nothing, and don't know you're wretched, miserable, you're a beggar, bumming on the street, poor, blind, naked. I got something to tell you, but you don't listen. And when he says, this is what you are, and you come to me for the Holy Ghost, 
and for the raiment, <clears throat> that the shame of your nakedness doesn't appear at my appearing. You better get your mind shut. They said, who are you talking to? So when the messenger came, they said, amen, my foot. <clears throat> Trouble with you is Branham. Never mind that stupid picture. Who knows what that is? And all that poppycock about the angels. We got news for you. It just happens that you're a poor little ignorant Kentucky hillbilly that God gave a great gift to, so you had to mess everything up. You had a Roman Catholic priest knows when God brings a miracle, I mean, shut up, sit down, and listen. Well, that Roman Catholic priest may do a whole lot better on the Judgment Day than all the Pentecostals put together. In fact, I can tell you right now, he will. The man that wrote that book, in my books, absolutely be at the White Throne. Now remember, God said in his word, if the heathen know by conscience without law what to do, and you Israelites have got the law, don't even listen. They're going to be a witness against you. <clears throat> I know that they expect us to kowtow to them, or if we're right, at least to feel terribly sorry. Well, they may have a point, not to kowtowing, but to terribly sorry. Now she said here, Amen, according to thy word, <clears throat> let it be to me. The virtuous bride, if there is one, and there will be one at the end time, will be as Mary. We must particularly emphasize the words of Mary, according to thy word, that is, let this one, the coming one, be born of me, in no other way than according to the word of God, which bypasses man entirely, and even the woman entirely, except as a conduit for the nourishment and the forming of the child. So indeed, <clears throat> the word of God becomes flesh. Now that's what she understood. And the church today, the true bride will understand that. An actual spoken word, Son of God, was produced in human flesh. Christ was the word of God manifested in human flesh. The bride must be like him, as we notice in 1 Peter 1 and 23, which we've looked at many, many times. Being born again, or begotten the second time. Not of corruptible seed, <clears throat> but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. In other words, as Brother Branham said, we bypassed our word body. But by baptism with the Holy Ghost, we now have that which is commensurate. And, of course, that may be a sort of a loose statement, a little loose application. <clears throat> but believe me, it is still true. Because were we to have something different, God would have seen that we had it. So now, right, we have this then, the baptism with the Holy Ghost, which is the rebirth. Now notice he says, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Now we are to be re -got begotten or reborn <clears throat> because we were born of the corruptible spora or seed, and every child of God born of sex dies and corrupts. And even corrupts before he dies because he's born of corruptible seed, which means his body's got to go, was born to go. As one fellow once said right above your mirror, born to die. His body corrupts even before he dies and is a state of corruption. <clears throat> it is absolutely a body of death or the carrier of death. But let us notice Jesus according to his flesh. And to do that, we go to Psalm number, I guess it's 16 and 10. If it isn't, it better be, it better be somewhere anyway. All right. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, 
neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. <clears throat> and you notice over here in Acts, the second chapter, verse 22 to 36, ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved to God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. You see, it's no, you can't deny it. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. And notice that the elect didn't have a thing to do with that. Now, if they didn't have a thing to do with that in the Alpha, they won't do it in, in the Omega. But they'll be the only ones that don't. The foolish virgin also were crucified themselves the Son of God, not knowing what they do. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible he should be hold of it, holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I saw the Lord, foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. My flesh shall rest in hope. Now, no hope is earnest expectation. Now, Jesus had to die, but there comes at the end time a bride that won't die, so her flesh can rest in hope, in earnest, earnest expectation of the promise of the hour and those promises which are contingent to it. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known unto me the ways of life, <clears throat> and shall make me full of joy with thy countenance. That's a promise for this hour, too, because that's Alpha for the Omega, presence of Almighty God. And remember, that's what happens in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, doesn't it? Hold your finger there and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. As these, cross, these things cross my mind, I'll just look at them because we're in no rush. Uh, all right, it says here, we know in part, we prophesy in part, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Uh, when I was a child, spake as a child, understood as a child, thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Okay, you're in the Melchizedek era, <clears throat> the full revelation. And it says, but now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. And it says over here, we prophesy in part. Seven church ages, seven parts of the prophetic message because the Bible is a book of prophecy. But at the end time, it's face to face. Now, <clears throat> you don't have to believe that if you don't want to, but I got news for you, if I can find it. See, I'm always talking about things I have a hard job finding because I uh, have a job with the Bible. I know what's in it, but I don't know where to find it. Oh, I found it in the 12th chapter of the book of Numbers. After Moses was confronted by Aaron and Miriam because they smarted off, they got away with it, but they got punished. The Lord came down to verse 5 on the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tap when I called Aaron and Miriam, and they came, both came forth, and they said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and speak to him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. He ain't just a prophet. Let that sink in. Let it sink in. Yeah. My servant Moses, not so, who is faithful in all mine house, but with him will I speak mouth to mouth, even in a visible form, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. There again, God in a figure. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Now, this is a prophet deluxe. Not just a prophet, a prophet beyond a prophet. And God was angry with them. And when he left them, their bodies turned something like AIDS. Rotten. You're not so dumb you can't get what I'm talking about. All right, let's go back to Acts <clears throat> about this prophet. Okay.
We're reading in 22 there. Now, verse 20, If thou hast made known me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. You will make me full of joy with thy countenance, with your appearing, with your showing yourself, revealing yourself. Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you. The patriarch David is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us this day. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit in the throne. That's why he traced the genealogies of Mary and Joseph back to David. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. Okay. This Jesus had God raised up wherever all witnesses, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, and have received the Father promised the Holy Ghost. He has shed forth this which you now see in here. Now remember the promise of the Holy Ghost is temporary. It runs out. As it runs out, you have to get then, there's only one recourse, and that's the, the baptizer himself. So the baptism runs up, but not the baptizer. So now we're face to face with the baptizer. For Moses himself is not dis ascended. It was not Moses himself that ascended, though he himself said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy foes thy footstool. Okay? You're going to sit there, you're going to be there until there's time for the takeover. Now remember, there's a process going on now where the enemies, the foes, must be turned into a footstool. Now, what's a footstool? Something you put your feet on, right? Okay, let's check it out. Malachi 4, chapter. For behold, the day the Lord shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, ye all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall be neat, leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness rise, with healing in his wings, and shall go forth and grow up. You'll go forth at that time with him, growing up as calves of stone. You shall tread down the wicked, and there'll be ashes on the soles of your feet in the day that I do this, saith the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> so, all right. Footstool. This is the day of the footstool, the hour. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made this same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. God made him that. This is the great Son of God. All right. This one was born of the Word, and you will notice there was no way that his body could corrupt, even though he died. Couldn't. Well, the man's dead, the body corrupts. No, I'm sorry. No way, because the man had no sin. He was not born of sex. He was the last Adam, the second man, and made in God's image, and he came forth in that image that God wanted. And no way could the body corrupt. Now, if he'd have taken 30 days in the, in the grave, uh, it would have been already provided that corruption could not set in. Amen. Now, notice Brother Branham said the fourth day corruption would set in. There's no way it could set in because that was the word of God. He's going to rise the third day, and his body was kept in that very particular condition. And the third day signifies sometime in that hour, the third hour, there's got to be the, there's got to be the raising from the dead. <clears throat> now, Let's look at 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and verse 51 to 55. And in verses uh, 51 to 55, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die. Nope, we're all going to be changed. Without death, without the body corrupting any further. Now, this is going to be just like Abraham. Just about one minute before his body was changed, he was in the worst shape he ever was in. But remember, that word kept him from ever going to the place of corruption. He couldn't do it. That word changed him back to a young man and Sarah to a young woman. Now remember, our Abraham, which is really the seed, which is Isaac. But we've got to go back. Isaac did die. Of course, Abraham died too, but we did not see Isaac coming back from a state of, well, of morbidity, you might call. He was ready to die, but Abraham did. 
and Abraham's body was changed. We shall not all sleep, we'll all be changed in a moment. <clears throat> in the twinkling of the night, the last trump, <clears throat> where the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall raise incorruptible. And we shall all be changed for this corruptibility must put on incorruptibility, and this mortality put on immortality. And at that particular time, death is swallowed in victory. It doesn't say it's destroyed. It's just swallowed up as a wild animal in a continent. And so death at that particular time has no sting. <clears throat> so here's what you're looking at. In this hour, it's going to take a virgin bride, virgin of the word, who has no mind but the mind of Christ, no word but the word of Christ. And yet you'll notice that many, many churches have that inscribed on their cornerstone, no word but the Word of God or the Bible. And of course, that's a lot of hogwash because it's not according to the Word of God as long as you've got a creed or a dogma there, even though 90% of it be the Word of God. If you've got your own little creed in there, by changing one word, you have a problem. All right, now, we're going to go back to page 30. <clears throat> and Brother Branham says in page 30, Hallelujah, can you see, which means can you understand what I'm saying? The Word takes flesh. Now let's go back to the previous paragraph. And Mary is talking. And she's saying, listen, my old mother is a blind woman, but she's a godly woman. Through her lips she planted a seed in my heart. I've read it out of God's Word. Now remember, the Bible tells us, way back there in the uh, Pentateuch, that you're supposed to take the Word of God and teach it to your children, to your children, children, right down to a thousand generations. You see, now a thousand generations is quite a long time. A generation can be 20 years, 40 years, can be 100 years, can be 1,000 years. If you look at Scripture, you'll find that. The generations in the beginning were 1,000 years. Then they went down to 100 under the time of Abraham when he said, your children, your gen four generations are now, <clears throat> 400 years down in Egypt. And then now a generation can be 70 years. That's, in other words, a completion. Yet Brother Branham says a new generation starts every, every day. But remember, the Word of God is given to God's children, and it never runs out. There's no Word of God void of power, and there's no Word of God that ever dies, ever runs out till its course is completely finished, and when it's completely manifested. All right, she said here, now what is the word she read? I read it out of God's Word myself, and God said in Isaiah 9 and 6, a virgin shall conceive. Now that was the word planted in her heart, now, do you think for one minute that any other woman in Israel, if somebody came to them and said, now you're going to have a baby without male intervention, they'd look you in the eye and said, just who are you trying to kid? I suppose you think that you're God or somebody. Oh, they knew all about these gods that came down and got women pregnant. So the virgin birth was something which would be looked upon askance, and uh, they would know there's great trickery there. Now, what I'm trying to show you here is this angel interpreted to her, having come from God, what the Scripture really means when it says in Isaiah, because it does not say a virgin shall conceive, her being a virgin and without male intervention will bear a child. It's actually Alma, which means a young woman. Now, you see why I'm saying that is for the very purpose to get you to understand that there's a lot of things in this Bible that you and I think we can just read and know, and then in the face of vindicated revelation, we say, oh, just a minute, that can't be because I've got my own idea. Well, I'm sorry, that's the way people are. That's just the way people are. <clears throat> this young, now, let's go a little further. Brother Branham categorically said, Every, every man figured his daughter would be that one to bear that child. And he said, they're putting aside the little booties in the bird's eye. Now, they're getting the diapers and the, boot, and the little boots ready. Now, do you mean to tell me Israel believed that a woman without male intervention was going to have a baby? It would be Messiah? See? Brother Branham took a lot of things that he said, and when you balance them all in there, there's 100% with the word. Because when he said, every father said, now that's my daughter. I'm looking for that virgin to come forth. You, every, did every man in Israel believe in virgin birth? Now, just a minute. Brother Branham's own words were concerning Mary. They said, virgin birth my foot. She's number a little whore to her husband. She had a child illegitimate by a Roman soldier. 
Come on, you can't have your cake and eat it. The prophet didn't make mistakes. He put one thing here and one thing there, and you bring it together, it's 100% perfect. <clears throat> because they all wanted that daughter to be, to be the virgin to bring forth that child, that young woman. Sure. Of the tribe of David? Sure. Men, males. He didn't say you were in your mother. He said you were in your father. Because the father bears the lamb. <clears throat> so, all right. This girl, <clears throat> this young woman, virgin, yes, but young woman. The angel came to her, and she pondered the picture. Let's go back and look at it. It's over in the book of Luke. Let's just follow what's going on here. Now, it says the 26th verse in the sixth month, that's a Mary of uh, Elizabeth's pregnancy. The angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, this is a Gabriel to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Now, she didn't throw up her hands in horror. She wasn't overwhelmed. Now, just a minute. This sounds like somebody that's a little bit nutty. A little too simple to just stand there. Now, let's look at it. You want you, I want you to follow me. This woman was no run-of-the-mill ordinary young woman. I can tell you that right now. What made her stand there? What made her not get terribly frightened, run off screaming? Now, she knew about the devil, and she knows about fallen angels. There's no way she doesn't know these things. <clears throat> See? What, what is this about? She stands there and looks at it. In other words, what I'm saying, she didn't make any snap judgments based on her religion and her teaching, which they did with Jesus, which they did with John the Baptist, which they did with William Branham, which they did with Paul, which they do with everybody that comes from God. you got those birds, those people that make their snap judgments. Now, she stood right there. Now, now, she represents the church. Now, remember this. She's the virgin bride of Christ. And she wondered what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel continued, said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Now, this angel did not say, Mary, I've got a proposition from God for you. Now, that's the way you and I like it. Uh, Lord, I've got friends I'd like to see saved. Go right back to good old Pharaoh and Moses. Lord, now I'm going to go back to, to Egypt and I'm going to pray for Moses because he's really my half-brother, you know. I mean, Pharaoh, he's, he's my half-brother there. And of course, he wasn't real half-brother, but he was according to family relations. <clears throat> he was a half-brother. I'm going to go back there and pray for old Pharaoh because he was a nice old boy. And we played together. And, oh, we had our tiffs and everything else, you know. I'll just solve this whole thing by praying for those people. Everything's going to be nice. Now, this, this proves that's, that's a lot of hogwash. Amen. Now, he said to her, <clears throat> you found favor with God. Of course, that could be a come on trick. Huh? There's a lot of people swear they've found favor with God and they're going straight to hell. What I'm trying to show you, this woman was uniquely that one chosen, approaching unto God, and she fell right in line with reality. And it didn't explode her mind. Yeah. Now, if this didn't explode her mind, and it's so easy for people's minds to be caught up by the devil and taken right off the word. This is a very unique person. So therefore, the end time bride will be a very unique bride. She'll catch it right now and say, that's gone. That's gone, yeah. Yeah. 
You're no problem. And she'll stand there waiting for the full expectation of the promise of this hour. It's mine. Be it unto me according to your word. That's his bride at the end time. Now, a lot of other brides thought they had it, but they didn't. Mm -mm. <clears throat> See? Now, you'll conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. You'll call his name Jesus. He'll be great. He'll be called the son of the highest, because he certainly is. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. That's down the road. Still is. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, that's actually Isaiah. He's quoting right there from the ninth chapter. Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? <clears throat> now, she's espoused to Joseph. But look at this girl coming right around. Now, she, she could have said, Now, uh, this, of course, will come from my husband, Joseph, to whom I'm espoused, and I'm pledged to marry, and I will marry. Said, oh, you'll be, you will conceive. That's a normal thing that happens between husband and wife or between male and female. <clears throat> you'll be called the son of God, son of the highest. Now, she in her mind will accept this. She doesn't know how it's going to be. And the literal thought is, is a man involved in this? The angel said, no, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee, issue forth from you, shall be called the Son of God. Then he tells her something that nobody else knew. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with the presence of God, God being there, God himself, Nothing shall be impossible. Perfect faith. Now, this woman did not have any vindication that we can see written here in Scripture. So if you want to look at her faith <clears throat> and you want to see what she's like, in contradistinction to everybody else, you are looking at a veritable thief on the cross who in the face of a man that claimed he was Savior and was dying, couldn't save himself or do a thing, seeing no miracles, knowing nothing, but looking at him suddenly saying, remember me when you come to your kingdom. Amen. You've got a perfect picture of these two people. They're absolutely fantastic. One trusting in a crucified and dying Savior, yet knowing this, this is it. And this woman knowing nothing of how anybody could have a child apart from a man. She just says, well, how will it be? God's in this, but I'm going to marry a man. Which is it? Now, she must have known something about serpent seed because all of Israel knew about serpent seed. <laughs> you know, it's really beautiful when you come, when you come here because here the, the Pharisees, in the light of everything Jesus did, proving he was actually God manifest in flesh, boy, they said, he's the awesome. of Anybody can see that because he doesn't agree with us. Now, let's get the picture. In the presence of the amen. Amen, she said. Amen. Amen. Whatever's for me is for me. How many people are going to make the rapture? How many fivefold ministry? Brother Branham went just before he died. He said they're less than what's on his five fingers in hand. I believe old Sam Connolly wouldn't lie. Any more than I lie, but he said to me, what's, what's to lie? So Mary said, behold the handmaid. Amen. This is what she's saying. Amen to the God of the amen. He doesn't change the same God. <clears throat> but the, now notice, this is Alpha. Right? The bride is there as a virgin bride with the 
a alpha God. The so be it. Now at the end time, we got the same thing. <clears throat> Larry said, behold, the hand made the Lord. He said, I'm it. I'm it. Bride's going to say the same at the end time. Be it unto me according to thy word. Now notice she said it twice. Didn't she? No, she said it once. But up here was the same thing. She said, how, how, can, this, how can this be? When he told her she didn't bat an eyelash, she didn't move away. Behold the hand of the Lord. Be it unto me. Amen to your word. Let it be exactly as the word of God is interpreted to me in this hour. And as I say, all she did was see an angel come into that room. What about when God has his picture taken <clears throat> and thus saith the Lord has been vindicated time after time and Brother Branham was in the same category as Moses and Paul and proven to be such. All right. Now, having preached this little paragraph, he said, hallelujah, can you, can you see, can you understand? Do you see how the word takes on flesh, it becomes flesh? <clears throat> there you are. God's going to have a church. It's going to be born of the word of God because it is the living word of God. Now, it was the living word of God back there speaking to Mary that brought forth Christ in flesh. Now, that's what you're looking at. Brother Branham said that the, when God stood down there with Abraham, the promise was just before the burning of Sodom. <clears throat> now, remember the judgment was passed. And after the fire, that son was born came forth in flesh, but the promise was vindicated. We've got the same thing right now. Before this earth is cleansed with fire and the Son of God in, in flesh with a bride comes down and takes over, we already have that word given to us <clears throat> and there's no way that it's not going to become flesh. It absolutely has to. Now, as Brother Brandon said, the word becomes flesh and the flesh becomes word. He says here, it's going to be born of the Word of God because it is the living Word of God. Do you see it? Do you understand now that at the end time, there has to be the Word come to a church which is virgin in this respect, that no Word will supersede the Word of the messenger from God. <clears throat> now remember, the church has condemned itself. The church that the book that Lindsay wrote and the Pentecostals took it was a man sent from God. Stadscliff wrote the book A Prophet Visits Africa. It was known that Brother Branham was of such stature as not seen since the time of Jesus Christ. Yet, as the Pharisees and Sadducees, they had no problem verbally crucifying him. He said, How do you know it? Why it's going to, and he, he cuts his phraseology off. You know what you're going to be called from this time on? You're going to be called a harlot. That's what Brother Branham said she was, according to the tradition that they said she was with a Roman soldier, then palmed it off as a virgin birth. Well, that's nothing. We had a Catholic girl who got pregnant by a Catholic priest, and she said that she had a that she had a child by the Holy Ghost because the priest was the Holy Ghost to her. Well, I don't know. I thought the Holy Ghost had morals that forbade us to do those things. Why would he do? You know, you can see people just, be, you can go to church and go to hell so fast your head will swim. <clears throat> in fact, actually going to church and praying is one of the quickest ways to go to hell because there's nothing in the church and your prayers never get answered. You know, let's face it. You, there's, a, there's a mess in this world. You know, you call a spade a spade. I'm quite well known for that. He said, she said, I don't care what I'm called. That has nothing to do with it. Be it unto me according to the word of God. That's the same thing the woman turned the corner. Now she can never go back. Now she gets pregnant. Joseph has a dream. <clears throat> she
she tells everybody, I'm, I'm a child of the Holy Ghost. They say, ho, 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 you and who else? Yeah, Brother Branham showed that nobody but Christ ever lived the life and, and never told a lie. Because she turns around to him and says, My, your father and I sorrowed. He said, what are you talking about? I must be about my father's business. You're telling me about Joseph's business? Come on. I'm not his son. You know it. Are you lying now again the second time? Hey, I want to tell you one thing. God's going to catch you flat-footed, brother, sister. There's nothing hidden that won't be revealed. Nothing what we shudder from the house top. Make your hearts clear. Don't leave this building full of sin, lies, and everything that could be lodged in your heart, making up stories about people, everything else. Don't do those things. Oh, could everybody say that today? I've turned the corner. Oh, people could really from the heart, all of us, could say that. See, be it unto me according to thy word, Lord. We really mean it. <clears throat> In other words, I'm stuck with it. Live, die, sink, swim. I'll know the real thing when it comes. I suppose Mary said that. Well, this isn't the real thing. Oh, brother. Hey, I want to tell you something. Alpha is Omega. Amen. Don't ever forget that was in the Gospels when Jesus Christ was there. Now, we're talking about God himself. In his Son. Whatever was there, whatever was done by anybody, there is a repeat in the Omega when the Son of Man days are on this earth, which they were. Now, you've got the same crew. They don't believe that there's a bride that can bring forth Jesus Christ because, bless God, they are the bride that's going to bring forth Jesus. In fact, they don't even know much about a bride. They think the church is the bride. The true church ceased being a virgin way back yonder. Now, there's a little group in here that all believes that whatever God brings forth. <clears throat> now, he says here, my really mean it, one or two or somewhere out there, out in there, is going to be, is going to pick it up. In other words, they're going to catch it for this hour. Some predestinated that really means that. And brother, you're going to see sparks flying right then. That's right. When you really got there, that there to meet that, what's coming, when that irrigation begins to fall on that word, Yes, sir. And <clears throat> now he's talking about bringing the Son of God in flesh. Let's understand that. And the church is preaching vehemently, bringing back the king and causing this one to come back to earth, <clears throat> winning the world for God. They've fallen in the same old trap that Catholicism is. When we somehow, by force or any way, can convert the world to Christ, the Christ of our thinking, he'll come back. And my Bible said eight people make the ark. Now, hey, the world condition is so rotten that no politician can make a right decision. Now, come on, let's face it. Every year they get suckered in. Nixon got suckered in. Oh, he was big mouth. No taxes, no taxes. Every time taxes are raised, it's a bigger boondoggle. Congress grabs it, spends more money, deeper in debt. 16 ton, and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me. One day they're going to call for the debt. The whole country's going to be bust. <clears throat> now, Reagan raised taxes, he suckered in. Bush suckered in. This time it's not even a sucker job with Clinton. <laughs> no, it isn't a sucker job. They knew it and they're raising taxes. And he's not going to clean up this debt by, what is it, 
five billion bucks or 500 billion in the next five years, there's no way there'll be 500 more billion worse in debt. You think you can get rid of Senator Byrd down there in, in Virginia? You'd have to kill him and Rostenkowski because he's out of the, of the ways and means. And Byrd's the biggest pork barrel of the whole bunch. And the guy in Pennsylvania is no different. I'm talking right off the top of my head the truth. The guy in Pennsylvania, you can see that it's a, it's a memorial to the steam engine. Yeah. Why don't they put a memorial to Christ and feed kids? Do something really worthwhile. I'll tell you, when they feed kids, they'll skim all the cream off. If they allocate $5 billion for kids, they'll take at least $4 billion of that. Huh, you can't believe everything you hear. I sort of do, though, if I hear it the right thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, if it's the right thing, if it pleases me, I, I believe it. <clears throat> There's a man, I'll show you his film in due time. He's been accosted by the FDA because cancer can be healed, any kind of cancer at all. There's really nothing to it. Of course, you're drawing your last breath, forget it. Or if your time, your trump is up, if God trumps your ace, you're ready to go, you've got to go whether you're ready or not. <clears throat> they sat with the FDA, he and his friends that believe in this, and I have a lot of information on it, and also the product that's available to me. And they told him flat, we are not interested in the cancer cure. And they said, I don't believe the FDA could say that. Are you nuts? When Dr. Aitken, the guy with the make you have better energy and better health and, uh, and get the fat off your bones and things like that. When he literally spoke up against the F, rather the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the National Cancers, the American Cancer Society, that they were nothing but a bunch of boondogglers make, taking in billions of dollars and not spending it on proper research and helping people. I thought they'll, they're, they're going to get that guy's license, they'll kill him. But suddenly they had a little twinge of conscience. And they said, Doctor, you're right, but there's nothing we can do about it because it's such a monolithic, bureaucratic bunch. You mean I've got the money to help you from starving? I've got the money to lift your burden? And was given to that purpose? And the legislation's there? And then I've got the right then somehow by divine intervention, it's the devil, and I'm not going to give it to you? Oh, come on. Read your Bibles. It's over here that the sorcerer is there. Amen. The 18th chapter, and he's the druggist. Is it the 18th? I thought it was. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the 17th. Where is it? Who you guys are? It's the 18th chapter's got to be in it. The kings of the earth? Yeah, it says there in their fine oil. Anyway, the, the, they're called the sorcerers. Yeah, it's up here somewhere. The wrath of the fornication, the kings there, the merchants are wax rich, the delicacies down. Anyway, there it is in there. It's a sorcerer. And what are they? That's your, that's your, that's your druggist. <clears throat> All right. We're reading in here. Okay. Now, one or two out there, that's you getting down to eight, make the ark, are going to really believe this message. Now, this verse, this paragraph here, could really be referring to William Branham more than it's referring to the bride on the grounds he said, you're going to be sparks flying right then. That's right. When you really get out there and meet at there to meet that, what's coming when that irrigation begins to fall on that word, yes, sir. Now, we know positively that though Pentecostals thought they really had a latter rain, they had the real anointing on the Word. Brother Branham was the one person that really had it. The rest didn't. Amen. They just thought they had the pillar of fire, and they just thought <clears throat> they had this end-time ministry. They did not have it. And that la the Spirit of God falling on, on the Word of Almighty God, Brother Branham just introducing and preaching, proved absolutely radically that the word that that man brought was the word of restoration of this hour. Now, let's say there's a bride that actually meets that. 
and said, look, we, we're like Mary. We've turned a corner. We are not going to stand for any foolishness. This is it 100%, and we know it. Anything else is counterfeit because this is it. Be it unto me according to that word that that messenger brought. Now, now there's, there's no problem believing Brother Branham because the Bible distinctly said, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receives me. <clears throat> he that receives me receives the Father which sent me. So we have no problem with church age messengers if you want to believe the word just even simply mechanically. So, all right, there's got to be then, Brother Branham described that one, the same as Latter Rain describes it over there in the book of Joel. You see, it talks about that. <clears throat> They shall run to and fro in the city. That's chapter 2. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon houses. They enter the windows like a thief and so on. He said that's the rapture. That's the people that's anointed for the rapture. In other words, they are that word, the same as God anoints his word and brings it to pass. In this particular case, this word, as in all particular cases, except prophecy about Russia and Denmark and God knows what. But when you're talking about God's Bible and God's people, this is a prophecy and it's manifest in human flesh. And let me tell you, that's exactly what happens. The sparks are sure going to fly because we're going to put on incorruptibility. <clears throat> now, what was it? The virgin mind womb, virgin womb for the baby. Results, eternal life. Eve, a good woman as she was, virgin as she was, but she first let the doubt come in by the word, a devil's lie. What did he, what did he do? Brought her into, the, into, con, in, into contact in the wrong way. What was her child? Death. <clears throat> and that's exactly true. As Brother Branagh said, there was no sentence in there concerning death they were meant to live. And the fact of the matter was they were meant to live, as the Scripture says, replenish and fill the whole earth. Those two people were supposed to literally fill the whole earth and absolutely control it <clears throat> and get rid of the devil and destroy all of his works and this whole earth filled with the glory of God. It never happened, but it's going to. And there be nobody on this earth of millennium but that those elect children of Almighty God having taken over this earth and the thrown the devil and the, and, and, and the, and the false prophet, the whole bunch, into, into the lake of fire, into hell, rather. <clears throat> and then stand up on the dead, judgment of the white throne, condemn the whole thing. Where there be nothing left, Brother Brown said, but flames leap up a thousand miles high to destroy, destroy every single germ even. She was supposed to bring forth life and she brought forth death. Every child to live and not want to die. Mary, virgin mind, virgin womb. When the devil tried to tempt her, at the time the angel came to her then and said, you're going to have a baby, and Satan said, now, you better be quiet about that. The angel said, it's an act of God. She had, and she no doubt thought of Isaiah 9, 6. She's already repeated that, of course, over here. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, she said. What's the result? Virgin birth eternal word in her, and she brought forth eternal life. Now, what was the eternal word in her? Faith in the understanding of virgin was going to bring that seed, the Messiah. Now, she didn't know it was, it was going to be she. <clears throat> she just knew that word had to be there, and it was there. And the angel came and said, this is that hour. Then he let her know how it was to be. And that was sufficient for her. She believed it. See? <clears throat> now, we look at that. Um, in a second, yeah, you're going to have a baby. And Satan said, now you better be quiet about that. And the angel said, it's an act of God. And she no doubt thought of Isaiah 9, 6. Well, of course, she couldn't help but think of it. He, she, he said already, she already knew it. <clears throat> She'd been taught it. So, now, we are likening ourselves to the Virgin Mary. Now, listen carefully. Our testimony is the last and only true testimony of the church, seven church ages, and it can't be changed. We haven't made a mistake. It's not going to be superseded, though many times, many people have made this testimony, and ours is the last and only true testimony according to Acts, the third chapter. <clears throat> so let's go to Acts, the third chapter. 
Now, we won't just stop there. We're going to go to Matthew 17 and so on. But in the third chapter, the middle of verse 19, it says, When times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, even God shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, or appointed to you, whom the, but now watch now about this Jesus Christ, whom the heavens must retain until the restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all these holy prophets since the world began. Now it tells you right here, at the time of refreshing that comes from the presence of God, positively, that is the hour in which Jesus has to return to the earth, but hold it. He still can't come. And he won't come until there's a restoration of the word right back to original. Now, who is going to do it? Well, bless God, says the Pope, that's me. But he's a liar. He's a liar. Everything he has is mixed up with voodoo and witchcraft. And he's admitted it. So he's a liar. He's no more vicar of Christ than, than I'm the prime minister of, of what? Who knows? Nepal or someplace if they got one or Pakistan. <clears throat> Neither am I the Lord God that just came down from heaven. See what I mean? Let's take it right to the logical conclusion. Now, it says the heavens have to retain him until that. <clears throat> now, the question is how? Restoration is spoken of in the 17th chapter of the book of Matthew. Now, it says here in verse 10, his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? Now remember, Jesus had already said in the 28th verse of the 16th chapter, If there is any, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And they saw him in his kingdom, which was the glorified millennium. State of glorification. They said, Just a minute. <clears throat> We thought Elijah was going to come. Now remember, this is a vision. This is a preview. This is a picture. This is not the real thing. This is yet to come. They knew that. He said, let's build three tabernacles. There's no way. Now, we thought Elijah, and he said, yes, Elijah must first come and restore all things. <clears throat> Trudy's got to come. But I see on you, Elijah is already come, and they knew him not, but have done him whatsoever they listed, they wanted to do. Likewise, also the Son of Man shall suffer of them. Now he's putting the two together. The Elijah of that hour foreran the suffering. And the kingdom didn't come. So there's got to be another Elijah, whoever he is, and who cares, but he's got to come. And he's going to restore the word. Now, that's the whole secret, the restoration of the word. And that restored word can bring back Jesus in flesh. Very thing Brother Brown said. He said, the church cannot produce him. They cannot produce him in flesh. <clears throat> they can't produce God in flesh. There's no way. See? Now... We understand that. So, we have the correct testimony. This is Elijah, which was to come before the burning. <clears throat> now, John had no burning. He was a voice crying and going before God manifest in flesh and they killed the flesh. They would have nothing to do with the flesh. Oh, the spirits, they, they, oh, hey, they didn't have a, a clue. <clears throat> so her testimony was spurned. Now, our testimony called believer's supremacy, and we are, is going to bring forth the Son of Man according to Hebrews 11 and 40 that says they without us cannot be made perfect. <clears throat> now, Hebrews 11 and 40. We take a little look at that. Now, I don't want to get too involved here because I can prove my point as I go along, but I don't want to get too involved. All right, now look here. 
It says here in verse 39, These all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise. God having provided some better things for us. Now Paul is speaking in terms <coughs> of this, of the, of, the, of the people that are in the New Testament church. They've gone, there's no longer any Jewish religion central. The bruised reed, he broke. The smoking flax, he quenched. Their religion is gone. Never to be restored. I don't care what Israel tries to do, build a temple, build a thousand temples. There is no way the pillar of fire is going to come to them under their conditions. It's only going to come when they say, Blessed he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And if that was Jesus that we crucified and rose again, then he'd better get here. And there's a bit of a groundswell even now in Israel that <clears throat> concerning Jesus of Nazareth. But the haters are still there. The seed is still there. Now, they without us cannot be made perfect. Now, the word perfect in there, of course, cannot be brought to a conclusion. See, in other words, they cannot be. They cannot be placed in the millennium. <clears throat> There's no way that you're going to get them there without us. Because we are the New Testament church. They are the Old Testament church. They had their seven church ages. We have our seven church ages. They had the tabernacle with us. We have our tabernacle now. And Christ was our tabernacle. And we, of course, are like the church in Luda's because we ourselves have no appointed resting place. There isn't one as far as this earth is concerned. We can, we can only claim where our feet touch on this earth when we come to the millennium. We don't have a claim. Why? Because it belongs to Satan. <clears throat> Even though the price was paid, Satan has a lease for a certain length of time. Now, wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about with so great a God, when it says, let us lay aside every weight and sin easily besets us. What is that sin? Unbelief. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down the right hand of the throne of God. <clears throat> now, it says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied in your mind. Okay. Now, <clears throat> as you get to the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, you're going to peter out, of course, in chapter 13. But 11th chapter signifies, shows the heroes of faith and shows these one that ran the gauntlet uh, before us. They showed themselves to be great and mighty Christians. Now, they cannot be made perfect without us, and we already told you that. <clears throat> so, what does it say here? Wherefore, seeing we also, like them, go through the trial of faith, Prove and vindicate God, and God vindicates himself. We must lay aside <clears throat> the besetting sin, and the besetting sin is unbelief. Adding a word, taking a word, turning down a true revelation. You, you must not do it. Now watch. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, the alpha and Omega. Now he's Alpha, <clears throat> so he's got to be Omega. Now Paul traced him as to who he was, and he showed positively and absolutely that this one had a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, and he was begotten from the dead. Prior to that, he could not be a high priest because the priests only came from Levi. They were Levites. Now we have a new high priest, <clears throat> and he comes from the tribe of Jacob. So the order of the priesthood have changed. Now, you'll notice that over here in the fifth chapter. So also Christ glorified not himself. He made a high priest. He that said, and thou art my son today, have I begotten thee? Now, that is true, but watch again. As he said in another place, thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. <clears throat> See? And though he were a son, he learned to be by the things that he suffered, and being made perfect, became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him. Now, if he's the author, he's also the finisher. If he's Alpha, he is Omega. Now, look, he's, 
a high priest after the order of Melchizedek by the resurrection from the dead, and nobody else could do that. Now, let's go back over the fifth chapter again. Of whom many things are hard to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when the time you ought to be teaching, need one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. But strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now it tells you right here, there's coming a day when you'll be able to discern between good and evil. You will understand exactly what 1 John 3 is all about when it tells you about Cain and Abel. That Cain was of the wicked one. His paternity was of Satan through an animal. And, and Jesus Christ, <coughs> the uh, <coughs> rather Abel, was through the paternity uh, and maternity of the two children of Almighty God, though they'd gotten into sin. And now death reigns in them. But remember, Abel would be in that first, that first part of the, first of the resurrection. Now, He's telling you here that ad age is to come. And he says here, therefore, now, here is, in here now, is a prophecy. And the interpolation was in the 11th to 14 verses. Therefore, leaving the principles of doctrine of Christ, let's go on to perfection. Now, there again, you're looking at conclusion. And perfection is the end. So, therefore, if you're looking at perfection, you are not looking at the first principles. You are not looking at the time you first heard it. <clears throat> you are not looking at the first place of where Jesus is the author, which is the Alpha. You are going down here to the Omega. Now, it says at the end time Omega, not laying again the foundation of repentant dead works. Now, watch. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, which is the Logos of Christ, which is that beginning. You're going to leave it. Now, it goes right on down here, and this will do if God permit. What? Permit what? To go to the end where there is the omega, which is the, not only the author now, but the finisher. <clears throat> and he tells you what happens at the time of the finisher. See? Because the fire falls in. Now, in verse 13, when God made promise to Abraham, because we're by no greater and so on, right on down the line, he's still talking about Melchizedek all the way down to the very, very, very down here to 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews and, and uh, down to the end of chapter, verse 40. We get into chapter 12 again, <clears throat> and it tells you here, consider him that endured such conflicts and sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Lest you be wearied and faint. See? Now, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Now, you can't look at the finisher unless he's there to finish it. You can say, well, I can look at him because he's all in all. He is the author. He's the finisher. It's not telling you that. It tells you they cannot, they cannot be made perfect without us because God has provided something better, something better for us. And what is that better thing? It's a people that are not going to die. That's part of it. That's just part. Now, he says here then concerning the end time. Uh, He's concerning sonship, discouraging the training. And then it says, uh, now no training seems, or scourging seems, uh, chastening seems good for the time being. Later on, it brings forth peace for the righteous. Therefore, lift up the hands and hang down. The feeble knees make straight paths and so on, fall after peace to all men, looking diligently as any man fall of the grace of God. Now, there you are. You're getting right back to the first principles. They, they, they have left it. And lest the root of bitterness spring up, many trouble many. And uh, uh, lest you be like that fornicator, Esau, and then who sold his birthright for a morsel of meat, a morsel of bread. Uh, he would have inherited the kingdom, but there's no place found, no place. Now it says here in the verse 18, for you are not come to mount them that can be burned with fire and brimstone, so on, and so on right down the line. But you are come now to Mount Zion unto the city of the living God, the general assembly, and to, now, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, <clears throat> that speaketh better things than that evil. See, you refuse not him to speak. It doesn't say he spoke once. But it says now to speak it. Now, all right, now what I'm trying to show you here just briefly is the understanding that there is an alpha and omega <clears throat> in the matter of faith. There is the first time that faith was laid down based upon the fact that Paul could preach, uh, this one appeared to me in the form of the Holy Spirit, this one that you killed and crucified that rose again, that over 500 people saw him in a matter of, 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 of several weeks, what was it, 40 days or so. <clears throat> they saw that one, and the miracles that you understand now positively prove that that one has risen from the dead. Now, that is Alpha. 
Now, if that's Alpha Omega, it has to be the same thing, and this is where people do not follow Brother Branham in the world. Only we follow him. Matthew 12 proves, as Brother Branham said, it's obligated by Almighty God to come here in the form of the Holy Spirit and do now in this hour what he did back there in flesh. Amen. That then is the Omega. So you're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. All right, who is the finisher? Oh my, if you don't know where I'm going to turn now, you certainly don't follow Lee Baylor. Haven't all these years, you still don't know the difference between a hen and an egg and the baptizer and the baptism. I'm going to go right now to Ephesians, the first chapter. Wherefore also heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, love of all saints, seek not to give thanks to you, make mention of my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto the, the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, <clears throat> that you may know what's hope is calling, but the riches of glory is inherent in the saints, and what is seen in greatness of power to us who believe, according to the working of mighty power, which you wrought in Christ and raised from the dead. And it tells you right there at this particular time, the Omega revelation will bring about a resurrection which the Alpha could not do. Now remember, Alpha and Omega is the same. But Alpha is the starter and Omega is the finisher. So don't get all messed up in your minds. This is exactly why I said to begin with <clears throat> tonight, remember <clears throat> in the Gospels, Alpha and at this end, Omega. And at the time of the Omega, greater works than these shall he do. And that's exactly why you've got John 5 over here. And Brother Branham used it on different occasions. And he explained it in this very message we are looking at. <clears throat> And he says over here in the um, fifth chapter, 19th verse, And Jesus answered, said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For those things, whatsoever he doeth, these also doeth the Son. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Now, he doesn't say that he is doing them. It just says he's seeing them. <clears throat> so now God himself, not in the form of a human being, the Son, because the Son is up there and can't come down till it's, until the restoration. And the restoration is built upon vindication. So you see right here in the Omega, the Omega is greater works than these, that you may marvel, which is the same as over in John 14 and 12. Truly I say, he that believes on me the works that I do, shall he do, and greater than these. So the Father showeth him these things. Now listen, when those things are shown to him and come to pass, they got to be for one reason only, and that is for vindication. And what vindication? The vindication of God through the word. So therefore, when this is restored, Elijah having come, then Jesus himself can return and not before. Now, this is our testimony. We are it. William Branham came and preached. That was our angel. Let's make no mistake about it. We are not going to have a visitation of angels. That's a bunch of hogwash. You'll be carried right to hell with that cockamamie idea. Or any revelation that you have, that you think you can twist this and make that pillar of fire the soul of Jesus and all the junk that's been tried to peddle around this church behind my back and behind yours, and if you believe it, just you might as well beat it. I'm not going to kick you out. But it's not going to be very long until you're going to miss the rapture. Period. I'm going to miss it one of the two. <clears throat> now, there is our messenger, and he said it. Now, you and I have either turned the corner like Mary and say, be it unto me according to that word. That's my word. I'm it. Ah, nobody else but us talks that way. <laughs> Mary's was the Alpha testimony. Ours is the Omega testimony. Because there'll be no other people arise to testify to God. Now, if you don't think that I'm right, let's just get right back to the Second Thessalonians again. The first chapter, I'm going to quit because we don't have any more time. <clears throat> and Paul says at the time, 
And you that are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, don't get this all messed up. This is the same thing that he's talking about in 1 Corinthians. When God begins to put everything under the feet of Jesus. Now, <clears throat> just a minute, let's just go ahead and look at that. Uh, where is that in the book of Acts? Is that the third chapter? No, it's got to be, see, the second. Yeah. For David is not ascended, but he said to himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit down my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. The Lord said to my Lord. The Lord descends with a shout. Then we meet the Lord in the air. Which Lord are you talking about? See, not Jesus only now. God's not his own. It's Jesus is not his own father and vice versa. <clears throat> We're talking now about the, about the one that is his son. That said, restore to me the glory I had with you. And the voice said, I will certainly do that. So now he says here, this one is going to have the kingdom put under his feet. But it also says in the third chapter, there is no way that can happen until Elijah comes, restores the word. Now, who's the, who's the Elijah of this hour? The Lord Jesus Christ. Now, is he talking about the man that's on the throne, the one that had the pre-existence up there? He's talking about God himself. The God didn't matter how you uh, try to understand this. Get this flat. The Jehovah of the old is Jesus of the new, and he's not talking about flesh. And he's not talking about son. He's talking about Joshua or Jehovah's Savior, which is the word Joshua. And that name was given to that son, the son bearing his father's name. Come in his father's name. He said, and you, and you won't take me. He said, I'm Jesus. I'm Jehovah's Savior. I have my father's name. <clears throat> now, he tells you right here that flesh cannot descend. The Lord himself does send heaven. He's going to put all things under the feet of Jesus. And when that is done, the church is under him. And we go back to the marriage supper. God appears to Israel in the symbol, likely a pillar of fire because it appears in the symbol. Israel comes in, comes back, and destroys the rest, all under his feet. Then at the end of the millennium, he turns the kingdom back to the Father. The Father becomes all in all. Now it says right here, you would trouble rest with us, and the Lord be reaped from heaven's mighty messengers, and flaming fire taking vengeance on them, know not God, and being of the gospel, and so on. And but, but here's the main thing. You that are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed in heaven with his mighty messengers, when he shall have come to be glorified in his saints, and be admired in all that believe. Now he's coming for this hour, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. That tells you right there, the very one that brought the word to Paul is here revealing it. And that was a pillar of fire. As Brother Brown has said, he, he left the flesh and went back to pillar of fire. That's why you got people misunderstanding everything about Jesus. Oh, he's in comatose. He's here. He's, he's evaporated. The body doesn't all oh, come on. Don't be a nut. Time's gone. <clears throat> so that's it. We were looking at this over here. Was that the... Uh, Way back in chapter and page, <clears throat> page 30 over here, all right. He said, all right, Jehovah's Bride. Well, Jehovah's Bride got into the mixed seed and what have you. We can continue tomorrow morning without reviewing hardly anything. Just start working there. <clears throat> Concerning the Virgin Mary and her testimony, because that's what we were up against at this point. She had the testimony. She believed the messenger. She never, she never equivocated. She said, I'll take that. Now my question is this, how many are going to be in that bride? Very, very few. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight now at the close of this preaching service to enter into the communion and foot washing, Lord, which has been ordained of you and commanded. And, Father, we are happy to obey this commandment. We know there's very little in your word that's a direct commandment. It's actually a matter of life and revelation that comes because of that life, a guiding and a helping. And, Lord, we know that your word never fails. And, Father, we don't want to fail your word. So we just open our hearts now at this time, and may we gather <clears throat> truth and understanding from your word even more as we study a little bit 
And then we have these elements. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if we go to the chapter of John the 13th, it says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew his hour was come, he should depart out of this world, unto the Father. <clears throat> now notice, Brother Branham said that actually God left him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Having loved his own world, he loved them unto the end. So we go over then to the 11th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> And uh, we're looking at what Paul said, For I have received the Lord, that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This to remembrance of me after the same manner took the cup and he supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft ye drink it in remembrance of me. As oft ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye show the Lord's death till he come. For whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Now, <clears throat> let's just take a little scripture over here and we go to Hebrews 11 chapter, uh, which we were looking at tonight, but not in this same vein. And in the 11th chapter, we're looking at Moses. And by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Now, in other words, there was a commandment and direct dis a contradistinction against the word of the Lord. Now, these parents did not fear. They saw that the boy was right according to Scripture and they were not going to do anything against Scripture. By, now, watch. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the riches and re greater riches and the treasure in Egypt, <clears throat> for he had respect unto the recompense or reward, or in other words, to the recompense that God would give him or pay him back for being faithful to the word. Now, what do you get for being faithful to the word? You get what the word says. Now, you may be tried, like the word of the tried Joseph, until his, the word came to him, his deliverance came. But he, he states true. Now, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him was invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Then by faith he passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptian is saying or trying to do. They thought they could do it. They were drowned. Now, the verse I'm looking at especially is 28. But you could also look, at uh, verse 24, where he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, we know that Brother Branham often said Pastor Pharaoh, and he, usually, he would definitely say the same thing about the churches today and their pastors, which, of course, we know the, the Pope will head up the great pastors <clears throat> because he calls himself the vicar of Christ. He calls himself the big shepherd, and he's got the shepherd's crook and all those things to prove that, that he is that one. Well, hey, I, I could make myself a, the wing of an airplane and strap it on my shoulder and, and prove I'm an airplane. <laughs> Just as good as the Pope can prove he's Jesus. He isn't doing anything to prove he's Jesus. He proves everything he's not Jesus. See, he's antichrist. So come on, let's, let's face it. You, the, the guy is a complete phony, and the people want his phonyism. Now, if you listen, if that doesn't prove the world is insane, you tell me what does prove it's insane. Sure to God, I can stand up here, and, and, and if I declare to you, hey, I, I'm certainly, uh, uh, who, who was he? Well, you could say, well, I could, maybe I'm... Uh, Reincarnate. Well, that wouldn't be too hard if you said you're reincarnation. But there's one thing I cannot say. I cannot for, for certainly stand up and say I'm Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> you say, boy, the guy's even mixed up with his sex. Holy mackerel. <laughs> hey, just saying something is that prove it. <clears throat> you know, he's going to find out someday he shouldn't have advertised. So you're going to have to deliver mm -hmm. when he stands before the real Jesus. All that bunch of popes and all the Protestants, they're doing the same thing too. They're right in their hand and glove. <clears throat> now, you see, this fellow here, Moses, he wasn't going to be called a member of Pharaoh's daughter. Who, listen, who is it that's had the Bible all these years? Protestants. 
Every Protestant is the daughter of Pharaoh, of Babylon, of the great harlot, Rome. There's not one that isn't. Time magazine printed the chart. I got it somewhere amongst my junk, hidden somewhere. It's the truth. Every, there's, not, there's, no, there's no group that is not. Everyone denominated. And the denominations are all there proving exactly. And those that say they haven't, they're crazy. They have because you can prove they all stick together and they got their own ideas and all. <clears throat> Mennonites and Amish, all of them. If you don't believe it, go to the Amish. Say, hey, what do you believe? Some of you believe you're, you're real super if, if, you, if, you, if you don't have a bathroom with a stool in it. <laughs> I don't know what makes you spiritual going out in the woods. <laughs> then, you're little, then you're not quite so spiritual if you put something in your house but it doesn't flush. <laughs> I've been there, I don't know what I'm talking about. Where do you, where do you, get, where do you get that? There's no word for that nonsense. Listen, let's get this flat. The first sanitary rules ever laid down by anybody was by God. Amen. It's right in the book of Exodus. Right. Hey. right down the line. Sanitation. I, believe, I wouldn't be surprised Israel is the one that brought sanitation to Egypt where they had, the, they had flushing toilets and sewers and everything else. <clears throat> I wouldn't be at all surprised. In fact, I'd be surprised at anything else but that. Amen. They're always the brains. Any place, listen, go to any place you want. If this, if this man that I, I think I have faith in, you've got to have faith in the Hungarian Jew, or you've got to be a little bit, you know, rocky. <clears throat> right, Oscar? Uh, they closed him down. The FDA closed him down when he, had his, uh, when he, had a, when he proved uh, cold nuclear fission. And it's right on, right on his film, how it works. Took, took his plant for $15 million. Why? There's no money in, in, in cheap energy, cold energy. There's no money in it. Hey, it's the rich men. Don't you understand what's in this big religious movement? Right. In this great big mess of the world? Blame everything on God. By the way, you'll also see where we ever, when I show you the film, you're going to find we're so close to the secrets of life that this man has discovered. If this is not the end, I'm, I, I'd say, hey. Well, we'll all take off one day. We'll all get out of here anyway. I want to tell you something. I believe with all my heart we're locked up. Amen. Live, die, sink, swim. Amen. This is it or forget it. Yes. Don't even try to think. You're just going to make yourself a bigger mess than ever. <clears throat> okay. Now watch. He left the organization, which we know be true. He passed to Pharaoh. Through faith he kept the Passover, the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And by faith because of that, the faith in the Passover, and being a part of it, and remember, they that partake in Israel are partakers of the altar. Right? By faith, he passed through the Red Sea as by dry. And they put land in there as though it was dry water. H-O. Water's H-2-O, right? What if you, what if you knock the... The, the, what, are they, what they call the two uh, combatants apart. You just have a gas. And oxygen's dry and hydrogen's dry, right? Better be. The only way when they get together. Dry water. What's dry water? H and O. But they did pass through the, they rolled the, their waters rolled back, we know that. But you see, it was dry. You don't even have to call it dry land which the Egyptian, day, the Egyptian tried to do, they were drowned. God rolled it back. Now, <clears throat> what I want to show you here is this, that he kept the Passover, which was the sprinkling of blood, the slaughter of the lamb, and the, and the, the, and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn, now that's Egyptian. In other words, <clears throat> what you're looking at is the firstborn 
in all religions, especially at that particular time in the, in the true Judo religion, the understanding is that the firstborn is equal with his father, and he owns half of all assets. And his name on the check is just as good as his dad's. This is it. In other words, you're looking at <clears throat> the perpetuation of the kingdom as to its assets that are physical, material, human, spiritual. Now this man, Moses said, look, by faith, I'm keeping it. That I'm perpetuating and going on into that which is set forth before me as God. And he did it, and he went into the promised land. He did not die. Now look what you're looking at here. He broke it. This is the Passover. Take ye this in my body, broken for you. Took the cup, drink this in my name. Now, whosoever, rather whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, he's telling you here, when you partake of these emblems, and remember, you're dealing with Alpha and Omega. You're dealing with the Exodus. <clears throat> the very fact that you and I partake of these emblems are showing that positively we are part of the true Passover and we are not going to die and lose the inheritance because God will not touch the firstborn that are under the blood and signify their knowledge of this particular uh, commandment and ordinance of the end time. You follow me? We're looking now at the third exodus. Number one exodus, Moses. And Brother Branham always went back from his day to Moses because remember Lee said, we have not seen the pillar of fire that it came to, it came to Moses, the, the pillar of fire Moses, something like this. I, I, get, I can get the exact quote later on as member. We have not seen it for uh, the pillar of fire came Moses since the time of Paul for 2,000 years till now. He's telling you right there, that you're going right into the time of Moses, the time of Paul, and you're looking at the end time. Now, you're, you're looking then, therefore, at the third exodus, which will have a greater basing than the second exodus. Because remember, they, you, you simply can't type the exodus under Jesus as you can type this, because it just doesn't type out, and Brother Branham did not type it. He went right back to Moses. So we see here then, in this last day, it's very important to partake <coughs> of these emblems. Now, the same Bible, the same book, in the 10th chapter, he says here, verse 16, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Now, that's an actual participation and an association. And Brother Branagh said communion. He used the term communion as communicating, having communion. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Now watch. For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel hath the flesh, are not they which eat of their sacrifices partaker of the altar? Now, <clears throat> Brother Branham mentioned, and it is true, and I have no problem with what he said, except we better balance everything he said. And that is, he said, we do not take anybody away from the table, Lord, unless it is gross immorality. Yet the same person said, as I recall, we can get the quote, look it up through, through the computer. We got, you got all kinds of software, everything else. Did he not also say that you had no right to that table unless you were born again? You see, all right, then how do we know who's born again? What did Mary say? Amen. 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 amen for me. From you to me, amen. She didn't flinch. Now look, you're looking at the two things. Christ must come back. He cannot come back to the corrupt world system of churches. 
There's only a true virgin bride can bring him back. <clears throat> We're looking at that. We saw that tonight. We're looking also at the very fact here that partaking of the Lord's Supper is only for those who are born again. And the partaking is a significance in, sim in symbolism that we are not going to die. And we're talking now of the second death. We're talking even of this death. There'll be some standing here shall not taste of death. There's no way. Behold, I show you mystery. We shall not all die. It's, that was proven by vision in, John, in, in, Luke's, in uh, Matthew 16, 17 also. <clears throat> so what we see here then, we're looking at, is this, that the partaking of these emblems signify our faith and our testimony that we are not going to go into the great tribulation no way, shape, and form. That we are not daughters of the harlot system and that we are members of each other. And I'm going to tell you flat, if we are members of each other, we're members of the same word because the apostle Paul said, say the same thing. Amen. There are people who have this idea. I get letters all the time. They're crank letters. Well, not all the time, but enough time to just burn me to a little, you know, just sort of brown me up. They'll give me a little tan. They always try and say, you preachers are the ones that's causing all the trouble. You should get together. What for? <laughs> just to have a good fight in the Donnybrook and kill each other? Do you think I'm going to sit with preachers and, and simply agree with them for the sake of being nice and agreeable? Come on, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> no. I've taken my stand. The preachers say, Lee Dale's built a little house around himself. Yes, I have, upon the solid rock. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let the storms come. What does it mean the storms come and we stand or not stand? Well, hey, if the storms come and the house is rickety, it means you depart with what you believe. If your faith is solid and you're solid with it, you're not going to leave this lip, die, sink, or swim. You're going to stick with it. So communion and foot wash. What does foot washing mean to me? Well, <clears throat> what, what, is, what is your tabernacle? Your tabernacle is your house. So I say, say foot washing. There's a little, little sign right there to me if I want to call that. The uh, washing your garments, washing your feet. You don't have to wash the head. You don't have to wash the body. It's just the washing the feet. That's where the feet get tired. They're restored. They've been walking in tough places. It's a matter the communion table restores you. You're coming here for the clemency of God. <clears throat> what lies within the propitiation is yours. So like Moses, we celebrate the Passover tonight. God's not going to destroy the firstborn. Now, I'm old and I'd be taken out of here, but there's some of you sitting right here, some of you younger people. And some of you, what? You have to be only a matter of 20 years my junior. You have to be even 30 years. I can't see the world going on 20 more years. Brother Branham categorically told us the time that they're the, on the very verge of discovering life, that's the time that he's got to come. When you see this film, either this man is a liar or what you're seeing is going to blow your mind. And you will see it, because I'll see that you see it. Just get a big enough monitor, television set out there. And I want, if you're going to sit there, you're going to sit through it at least two times. Don't sit through it just once. But if that film is not a fraud, and that man is not a liar, but he's a true scientist, and he's got to be a pretty good scientist because he's a nuclear physicist, And De Beers hired him to make those diamonds out of gases, which, are car which is carbon. He was in Russian prison for, one, for nine years. He's had three complete major heart attacks. Either one could have killed him. His heart's just almost completely normal. What you see and what you hear will make you realize why the first word in the Bible is concerning creation. Let there be light. Amen. It's amazing. <clears throat> when I see all the signs coming in, what am I going to do? Well, Brother Dale, it's time to look for something to bear. 
You are a liar. You have not been taught by Levi. You have not heard one thing the prophet said. You are not my brother. You're not my sister. Now, you may be brother gods. I can tell you flat, you're not mine. Because live, die, sink, or swim. I'm looking for only one thing to take place. I'll be honest with you. That's the resurrection rapture. All right, let's rise. <clears throat> and the brethren come forward to serve. We have a little in the song leading. <clears throat> and we'll pray over the emblems. I guess for this one. It's okay, I got it. We're going to use this now because Lloyd will use it. Are uh, the brethren here? Yeah, that's fine. Now, you all know how to come. You start at the back there and you come forward. And uh, by the way, I also want you to notice, I know there's plenty of room out there for foot washing. Now, there's not so many here, but there's also back here room for about uh, 12 at one time. So the foot washing can go rapidly because there's lots of room for the ladies. And we're going to partake the emblems. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to commend ourselves to you tonight, Lord, and really commit ourselves in the faith of what we have been talking about. And, Lord, as Brother Branham said, it's not enough to, to, to look at and say, that's right, that's certainly right, and talk about it. It's only enough when we're truly committed to it. And, Lord God, tonight I've got to be honest with you. I don't know how to be more fully committed to this message. I can only preach it. You know that as well as I and everybody here, that I can only preach and teach it according to what I believe the prophet said in no other way. And with your help, Lord, and you're the only one to help to get it just right and see the simplicity, see it back and forth in the Word. You're the only one that can do that, Lord. And, and Father, I'm resting on that tonight, that, that what I've said is true, an actual fact of the Word, an actual type also. As we see Moses at the Passover, we see ourselves at the Passover. We see ourselves taking communion tonight because we believe we're firstborn and you're not going to get... You're not going to... Get rid of the firstborn. You're not going to cause them to die. But, Lord, we're going to go over there uh, positively enter into the millennium, we believe, after the wedding supper. These things, Father, that the only thing we could say is, we've said it many times before, and you know our hearts, that, and as Brother Brandon himself said, we're just not sincere, sincere enough. And, Lord, that's the thing we're looking at tonight. It's We are not sincere enough, but we do know the truth. We believe we do. And, and because that is so, Lord, we, we could say, well, we're a little bit too much like the, like the uh, disciples. And when you were here on earth with them, everything was, oh, great going. Everything was fabulous. And, and then the lull came when, when you were gone those three days. And even after coming back, their eyes were not opened. And, Lord, we may be a little bit in that position where we're not... Uh, fully realizing everything we should realize. But God, tonight, at least our hearts are right and our minds are right to this degree. We are believing we're taking these emblems right. And this last hour, Lord, and this last day of the crossing over that we're looking to the Passover and realizing Christ is our Passover. And he is our communion. We're communing one with another. and We are in this harmony. Help us to that end, Father. Heal the sick amongst us. And may there not be one feeble person, O oh God. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.